We have more time. How much time? I don't know. Till 8.30. What time is it? We have 15 minutes. We have an hour. Y'all aren't yeah. sick of us yet? That's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to play a song um, that I think is, is very important to play today of all days. Um, this is a song that we wrote many years ago now, and it's a song that we were never going to publicly release. You know, as songwriters, we use songwriting as our way to process our own emotions and life and the things that go on around us in our world. And in 2015, we were at the Indigenous Music Awards in Winnipeg. And after Yayi won for Language Album of the Year, we got to meet this incredible man. And he said, can I take a selfie with you and my little sister? And so, of course, Yayi and I were honored. But when he returned, he handed us a photograph. He explained that his sister had been missing for over 20 years and they still never had any answers. And he said to us, I bring her a photograph everywhere I go to keep that hope alive that one day she'll be found and one day we'll have answers. And so Yai and I, you know, how do you smile in a photograph like that? It was, it was heartbreaking. We held her photograph and we were grateful to the man for sharing that deeply personal story with us. And we told him we would, we would keep in touch. And so when we got home to Ottawa, uh, that was the year into the National Enquiry into our missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls. And as musicians, being based in the national capital, a lot of times we would get asked to play these corporate events, and we didn't know what they were. We would just show up, sound check, sit quietly at the back of the room. But one of the times was in one of the meetings with over 300 family members that had a missing or murdered person. And it forever changed the way that I see Canada, that's for sure. And... Um, you know, our heart goes out to anybody who's lived through this, who has a daughter or a sister or an auntie, anybody in your family. Um, and you don't have to be indigenous to feel loss. No. You know, it, 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 it's, it's an open song for, for everyone. So the essence of it is we leave our porch light on. Because when our kids are out late past curfew, we leave our porch light on, letting them know that we're still up and we're still waiting. And that's the same thing for all our women here in Canada. You know, we hope that everybody stays safe and the ones that are missing will one day be found. So this is portrait, thank you. Oh, no. 
slow song or a fast song. I think we're going to go for a more upbeat song. Hope that's okay with all of you. So this song is called Broke Down Skitok. Do you all know what snowmobiles are here or is it too hot all the time? <laughs> it's too hot, but I'm sure you all know what they are. Up north, they're the main source of transportation most of the year. And uh, we've actually flown into communities that have no cars or no trucks on the road during winter. And so we got picked up at the airport in our Twin Otter airplane in a, ski, a skidoo uh, a limousine. <laughs> so they built this awesome box for all our gear and we got to get to the venue on a snowmobile. Anyways, this southern girl was very, very excited by that. Uh, maybe more than I should have been, but every time I get to get on a snowmobile, I feel like a little girl again. Um, but the thing with snowmobiles is they break down all the time. There's a part of Canada's history that a lot of Canadians don't know about, is in the 1950s and 1960s, Inuit were still mostly nomadic which meant they got around on their dog teams, their husky dogs, and by sleds. But unfortunately, the RCMP received orders from the federal government to slaughter all the dogs. And so the Inuit way of life was halted overnight, and within a span of months, starvation and famine was rampant in the Arctic, and hunters could no longer go out on the land. But what quickly replaced the dogs were snowmobiles. Bombardier had come out with the first snowmobile and they started shipping them up to the Arctic. But the problem was, number one, gas, very, very expensive. Number two, they cost a ton to get up there. And number three, there were no mechanics to fix them when they broke down. So when you go up to the Arctic, still to this day, there are what we call skidoo graveyards. And it's junk metal and scrap metal of skidoos for as far as you can see. And so this song is a bit of a parody of that, how the snowmobile breaks down all the time, but also to share that very important part of Canada's history. Um, Yaya's brother just recently passed away last month. His name was Harry Okpik, 
and there's an incredible documentary on him called Opix Dream, and he brought back dog sledding to the north. He helped breed the dogs. So the dogs are back. It's vibrant today. There's amazing races that go on, Ivakuk race. So Yayi's brother was an amputee. He only had one leg, and it's the dogs that he says helped save his life living as an amputee. And when he started having his dog teams, he started training for these races, and he would do 600 kilometers in minus 50 to minus 60 degree weather on the tundra. They even sleep outside. So he's an incredible man. So we're going to play this in honor of Harry tonight. And uh, if you want to check it out, it's called Oak Extreme. Thank you. You know, when you go through the ice on your snowmobile, that's an insurance uh, hassle. But when you went through the ice with your dogs, your dogs actually went to fetch the master. That's why Inuit had the pointy hoods on their jackets. Yeah. We also hid ice creams under there. <laughs> you know, when we would get stuck in a blizzard, the dogs always knew how to get home. In today's age, Gas is so expensive. So if you're stuck in a blizzard, forget it. I come from polar bear country. Dogs yap a certain way when there's a polar bear close to town. You can tell that it's a bear. A polar bear loses, or a snowmobile loses its seat when the polar bear is there. It eats it. <laughs> Maybe because we fart on the seats. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Another insurance hassle. <laughs> Try and explain that one. Yeah, anyways. So we're going to need your help. We're going to need you to be the engine, okay? You're going to go, ow. Oh. He's calling the goose. Yeah. 